Hello, in this video, um, I'm going to use the grid convergence index method or the GCI method to estimate the discretization error um, for our simulations. All right, let me jump across to Abigas. Uh, so to demonstrate this, I'm just going to make a, a simple 2D uh, static stress analysis, stress analysis model. So I will um, rename, I was to begin with actually, I'll, I'll uh, set my working directory and save the model. Fine. Make a new directory, ECI. I'll use that to save my results. So set in this working directory, that means when the results files are generated, they're stored inside there. And then save as, I'll call it GCI. And then so I'll rename this model to plate. And I'm just going to make an arbitrary uh, plate that's 2D, approximate size of one meter. And so I'm going to draw it. The dimensions don't really matter here, but from 0, 0 to 0 0.201. And uh, let me just put some holes in it, make it a bit more interesting. Right here. And you can even use ellipses if you want as well. Maybe something like that. Okay, it's done. So that's the plate. So let me um, make a mesh. Let me check the default is 0 0.02. And so it's quite course, so I'll maybe just make it, I'll, I'll half that to 0 0.01, press OK, check the element shape. So by default, it'll make quad dominated. So that's kind of this paving method. So let me just measure it like that so you can see, uh, press yes. So it tries to make these, this kind of paving structure and every so often it has to stick a triangle in. Uh, but instead I'll, I'll just use a um, triangular. And on take map, reach, mesh it. Uh, so it's somewhat more uniform when you use triangles. And um, okay, I can just check the element types that are linear uh, shape functions. So we expect second order for displacement. It's set the plane stress as best as opposed to plane strain. So we can leave that. We could come back and try this later with quadratic elements to see a higher order of actually, but for now, we'll just use linear elements. And um, okay, next I'm going to make a material. I just use steel, elastic, the young module at 200 gigapascals, Poisson's ratio is 0 0.3. And um, make a section, steel, apply it, steel, go section assignments, double click, select the part, give the name, I'm just call it all, select all my plate. And um, okay, so let's assign the material, make the mesh. Let's add it to our assembly, perform the analysis on it. So, okay. And uh, let me make an analysis step and uh, be static general. So that's an implicit uh, steady state stress analysis. One time step's fine. It'll be small strain as well. So NLG on is off. And uh, boundary conditions, I will just fix the bit of the plate. So select this boundary. I'll call that credit set called left. I said that in Castro, which is just Abacus's word for saying that U1, which is UX, U2, which is UY, and is equal to zero. Uh, these other uh, four things are not active in this model. So for standard continuum elements, rotation around the first axis, rotation around the second and third, they're not active. So it doesn't even matter if you set them because you're not used. And then I'll play load on the right, I'll play pressure on the right side of the plate. Over here, that boundary, far right, done, and we're going minus one megapascal. So pressure by by convention, uh, positive pressure means putting in on the surface, so negative means pulling out. Uh, so you can see the little uh, picture here shows that it's not pulling out. Uh, so quick save, make a job, our plate, and it's fine. I will submit this. 
And um, so while that's submitting, if I jump across, uh, you can find on um, online that I've uh, uploaded this um, GCI Excel sheet. So I've created a little Excel sheet to do the GCI calculations uh, for you. Uh, so if I jump over here, so uh, these formulas are just taken from this numerical errors part one um, diagram. So the idea here is we have the predictions from three meshes. Um, so the courses mesh we call, the prediction from the courses mesh is called F3. So that prediction is maybe a prediction for displacement or stress or energy or something. And then a prediction from mesh two, which is the, a, has smaller elements is F2. And the prediction from um, mesh one is called F1. And that mesh has the, has the smallest elements. So that's the finest mesh was in the smallest elements and the courses mesh is the uh, gives us the prediction of three. So the other thing is the ORs to refinement ratio is just the ratio from the coarse mesh to the medium mesh, and also the same ratio of the medium mesh to the finest mesh. So that has to be the same ratio. And so this will this P is an estimate of the order of accuracy. So using that order of accuracy estimate, uh, we can use this formula here, which is Richardson's extrapolation. So that estimates the error on our finest mesh on our F on our F1 mesh. Um, and then from there, we can calculate uh, the GCI, um, which is a kind of conservative um, estimate of the error on the finest mesh. And then the GCI method lets us say, well, the true solution, we're 90% confident that the true solution, the mesh um, error free uh, solution, is uh, within plus and minus the GCI of the and finds mesh solution. So the yellow boxes are the only boxes you actually have to um, enter numbers for. So our course is mesh was 0 0.01. So we'll just enter that in. We're also going to use 0 0.005 and 0 0.0025. So we're half in gallon size each time. So you can see this refinement ratio gets calculated. So that's the ratio of this to this, which is two. And then this is the ratio of this to this. So if they weren't the same, so if I try setting 0 0.0 and 0 001, you can see that refinement ratio is 50. So this little um, box will go red and it will say that this GCI method, the way it's programmed here, uh, will only work if the refinement ratios are the same. So the ratio, of course, the medium is the same as medium to find. And then we're going to put our prediction. So that's the mesh facing. Uh, we're going to run our model and then look at a particular prediction and put it over here for our courses mesh. Uh, so this is our F1, our F3, this is our F2, and this is F1. So see any box that has a little red and uh, uh, triangle in the corner, that just has a little note. So it's just some extra information. And um, so you can just hover over those. Okay, so let's get our three predictions and then we can under interpret what uh, this is actually showing us. So this is run, I'll go results. We look at the field, okay, so it's uh, this, uh, it's fixed, it's placing zero over here. And then it's, uh, we apply the negative pressure over here, so it's pulling it out. Okay, so this is steel, so it's not really moving that far. That's multiplying the deformation by 8,000. So let's just add up the one to see the true deformation. Okay, so it's tiny, it's fine. And um, let's look at the displacement field. So we're going to do it based on the X displacement field, so U1. So what we um, displacement uh, we'll look at and um, we'll be and uh, we'll look at the right tip of this uh, top hole here so this point here and i'll uh, look at how the prediction for the space of that point changes as we refine the mesh so i'm kind of arbitrarily picking that <clears throat> but it could be done with any any value. so how do you get that right point value well you can use a probe over here so probe if you set it to nodes and you hover over that point uh, and click it will tell you the, the space at that point uh, which is fine, uh, but you can't copy and paste that. That's a bit inconvenient. So it's sometimes handier just to use the uh, query tool over here. Uh, so if you use this info query information, you go to node, and then I select this node there, then down here, it will actually print out the value itself. So you can see the displacement and values are printed out here at the bottom. So we have displacement 1.6 in the X direction, and minus four in the y direction and zero, and then that's the, the magnitude. 
Uh, so if I just copy that, so control C, and then I go back and then just paste it in there. So that's F3, that's the prediction we got on our courses mesh. So now we're going to redo that, except we're going to half the element size and see how the prediction changes. And then we go back and do that. And I'm going to go back to the mesh module, element size, there five, okay. And the mesh is fine. Mesh it again. Yes. And then resubmit the job. We click run. We get it complete. So I'll go results. Get the displacement field again. U1. And use our query node. This right hand side node. Uh, this is our displacement down here in the extraction. Control C. Back to our Excel tray. Paste it in. And then we can have to have it one more time. So we will go mesh and oh, global seed two five and mesh part. So you can see kind of binary again. And we will submit it. Just briefly pause the recording on the front end. It gets done. So I'm going to do this. And I will run again. So you can see all the contours are starting to get a bit smoother now. And there's the discretization here, the mesh I get smaller. So mode this right node again. I'll see it. And over here. Okay, so now we have our Three predictions from our three meshes. So let's just look at the actual prediction first. So we can see that on our course mesh, it was 1.66 microns, then it went to 1.678, then it went to 1.82. So one thing just to notice is the difference between the course and the medium, which is, um, let me just uh, calculate that. So if I go this minus this one, and then if I look at the difference between these two, so if I go this minus this, and you'll see that difference is getting smaller. So that's a sign of a method that's converging. So um, as you're getting closer to the answer, then the, the prediction as you refine the mesh is, is changing less and less. So that means the method's converging. So if that's not the case, so if this second number was larger, then it means the method is diverging, or at least it's not getting close to the solution. So in that scenario, you can't use the GCI method. So the GCI method will only work when the difference between these two is less than the difference between those two. Okay, so let's see um, all these calculations. So first, okay, the final ratio are the same, that's fine. So then we'll see this order of accuracy, P, which is estimated as 1.29. So that formula, if you click on that, you can see it's this log up here using the predictions on the refinement ratio. Uh, that's coming from yeah. here. And so it's 1.29. So for displacement for linear finite elements, those that use linear um, shape functions for displacement, uh, theoretically it should be two. And that means as we half the element size, the error should uh, reduce by a factor four. And um, however, this is just an estimate of the order of accuracy. And um, so as we refine the mesh more and more and more, that will approach two. But for our given mesh, it's estimating at 1.29. So that's fine. So then this is an estimate of the error on the finest mesh. So that's from, if I move this up here, so that's this formula here, F2 minus F1. And so if you click on it here, you can see um, that's that formula. And <coughs> so this is an actual um, sign there. So if we take our prediction here, 1.82, this is saying uh, microns. Is the same, there's an it's estimating the error is three e to the minus eight. So if you were to add that error onto this, that would give you an estimate of the true solution. So that's what this estimate of the true solution is here. It's just taking our finest mesh prediction and then adding on this estimate of the error. So you can see it's just increased a little bit. So this is like an estimate of the mesh free answer or the mesh and um, mesh error free answer. 
So this FS is the backup state to be used by the GCI method. This is the GCI itself. So the GCI is just a conservative um, error. So it's essentially taking the error, just scale it, make it a little bit bigger, and just take the absolute value as well. So it's a, you can see it's just a number that's slightly bigger, uh, but this error here can have a positive or negative sign, but the GCI is always positive. Uh, so then the estimate of true solution, that's just this binance mesh solution plus this error. So you can see this is our best guess of the solution. And then the, what the GTI does, it says it gives us a 95% confidence interval that the true solution is somewhere between this mean and max value. So you can see that we're kind of 95% 95% confident that the true displacement for that point we were looking at at the edge of that elliptic hole, as we keep refining and refining and refining, uh, it's 95% confident that it's in between these bounds. So maybe that's already a good enough confidence depending on the application. So we could do this exact same method. Um, if I use those same three meshes, I could look at any three values. I could look at stress at a point, and I could look at the global energy, I could look at the total force on the right-hand side. Um, and then this method will, uh, or this table, just by changing these yellow values, uh, will calculate the uh, mean and max from the confidence interval from the GCI, to calculate the actual GCI scale there, and also it will estimate the uh, true solution. So that's how you use the, the GCI, and it can be used for finding element or finding volume or any related uh, numerical uh, methods.